All right, guys, something else I gotta show you here. Obviously, it's a GDI engine, but um, look at this. Look at that, guys. It's hard to get the camera in there, but that is... really a rad amount of carbon we absolutely need to address this look at this one guys oh my gosh we need to address this this visit this is terrible amount of buildup so being that we have all that carbon buildup in the intake valves we absolutely have to address that at this time now if you're in hot states, it might not affect it that much. You know, the fuel trims a little bit, but in Minnesota here, it gets very, very cold. And when you have carbon buildup like that in the winter time and you start your car, it will cause horrible cold start misfires if you don't clean that carbon out of there. So I'll kind of show you what I got rigged up here. Um, basically, I don't have a walnut blaster. And on these GMs, you got nice big intake ports that you can get in. You can clean the carbon up. So I'm gonna kind of show you guys how to go about that. Now this truck, again, 93,000 miles. Obviously it's been driven very, very nicely. And it probably has not been beat on very much because the amount of carbon buildup for 93,000 is a lot of carbon on those intake valves. So we're going to hop the camera around and I'm going to show you the contraption I got set up, kind of show you some of the best practices for that. All right, first item I'm going to show you, this is what um, I would recommend using to clean the carbon. It's AC Delco top engine cleaner. It is a solvent. It is a very strong solvent. Um, basically what you do is bring the particular valve up to TDC where it is shut. You're gonna pour just a little bit down. Now, some people have different methods. What I typically do is I go down and I grab the base of the valve and I kind of knock, go back and forth, knock all the carbon that's built up off of the, off of the uh, valve itself. I have, um, and of course the camera's not gonna wanna focus. That one I have cleaned up slightly. Basically same procedure, go down, move the players back and forth, knock the carbon off. Then I go in with a pick and I scrape all the carbon out. Now, one thing I'm gonna show you guys. I've only done two um, intake valves so far. Actually, I'm, I've only completed one of them. And this is the amount of carbon. Now here's the liquid, because what I'm doing is I'm sucking it up with a, with a suction, sucking all the solvent that we poured into the intake valves into here. And then the big pieces I'm setting in here as well. But as you guys can see, I mean, that is a ton of carbon and that's just off this number one valve here. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do the rest. Um, obviously, eight intake valves, you're gonna have to clean eight of the areas. Uh, most important part though, again, make sure the valve is sealed shut. You do not wanna pour that solvent down there and then pour it right into the cylinder worse off yet scrape all the carbon and have those big chunks fall into the cylinder not a good idea so just something i want to let you guys know about these uh ls engines terrible carbon issues the other thing too is once you're done scraping you're gonna have a bunch of chunks and you're gonna have residual liquid that you can't suck up even if you have a sucker so what you're gonna have to do is rig something up Basically, I got a shop vac, oversized hose, and then I got it rigged down into a small hose. And if you guys see what I did there, I kind of cut the end so that as you're getting up around the valve, these fingers will flex around. 
and suck the rest of the liquid and the carbon up. So we are also doing an induction service to this after we're done. So that will help as well. But the main thing is you gotta get the big chunks off because the induction services will not do that. All right guys, I'm gonna attempt to show you the severity of the carbon buildup in here. All right, so you can see all that heavy carbon buildup on the shaft there. That is what we're after. And then we scrape up the walls to get those to the point where the fuel induction service will help knock some of that carbon off. You see my scratch marks there? That one I've already cleaned. We've scraped a lot of carbon off of it. That's why it looks significantly cleaner. And then we scratched up some of the walls in there as well to help knock the rest of that carbon off with an induction service. I'll probably do a couple more scratches and then we're gonna keep moving on to each valve. Now you guys see it. All the valves look like that or worse, which is why we are in here. All right, there is a perfect example of all that carbon buildup. You guys see that? I mean, it is caked on there. That's about the best shot I can give you guys. Look at that. See around the stem, there's a humongous layer there. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna scrape this one out and then I'm gonna show you the after. And then see, you use these pliers that got a little hole on the tip. Reason for it, you can grab around that valve shaft and knock the carbon off. Oh, with the pick, you can kind of do that blind by feel. I'm gonna scrape the walls first. He started a dumpster fire. <laughs> Look at that. And you can kind of tell by sounds, by how it sounds, what's metal and what's still got carbon on it. Not a great method, but Dude, these back ones are wow, crazy. All right, guys, I'm trying to get you in zoom here. That is the after. All right, again, the after, as you can see down on the stem there is significantly less carbon. It is way, way cleaner than it was. 
as you can see there again guys it is very very hard to film in there all right guys we got her we got her running right now currently um well you can't really see the hose you can see the hose right there but i uh, got a fuel induction service running right now bg So right, we're, what we're doing right now is this induction service. Essentially, we're hoping that that will help knock out the rest of the uh, carbon deposits that are stuck to the intake valves. This is a very long process. This induction service typically takes about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, so we're gonna let this run for a while. And then what we're gonna do when we're done with this induction service, we're gonna clear the codes we're going to reset the fuel trims with the scanner, and then we are going to watch uh, the fuel trim data to see if our problem is now solved. All right, gang. On the test drive, just pulled over here after resetting the fuel trims. Here's what we're looking at. Our long term is staying pretty flat, which is awesome. We are, you know, between negative seven to positive seven, that's completely normal. Um, right now we're at five, it's actually learning that it's it's adding more fuel. And the reason for that most likely is now we have the, the valves cleaned. And so this thing is actually running significantly better, which is awesome. So right now we're at idle, all the gauges look good fuel trims look good again we're tracking perfect right now now if we look and we go up to i want to show you guys the mass airflow grams per second here okay so on these uh newer five threes all right I guess it is perfectly normal at idle, which is about 600 RPM, give or take, to be under four grams per second. I did uh, actually talk with a coworker on that. That is completely normal, so you can't really use that logic of displacement on it. Other than that, you know, we can go through all the uh, data here, but everything looks good. I've done a code scan already after driving it. I have no codes. Um, I'll go back. Our long-term adaptations, see average without purge, zero and zero. Looks good. Test average, we're adding fuel. That is good. We'll go back up to the top here and this kind of shows you we are not negative which is awesome so truck is fixed 